So what is successive interference cancellation in communication systems? Well, let's look at the uplink of a communication system, maybe a mobile communication system, for example, where we have two users and their signals are X1 from user one and X2 from user two, and they're in an additive white Gaussian noise channel. Uh, let's take this as an example. So N is a complex Gaussian noise that's IID. So IID, uh, complex Gaussian, complex normal, we sometimes say. Uh, and what we have here is uh, power being sent by two uh, transmitters. So power one from user one and power two from user two. So these two transmitters have this ability to send power. Now, what can we do at the receiver in terms of getting a signal from both of these transmitters and decoding it successfully? Well, one way to do that is to divide up the resources in an orthogonal way. So for example, uh, we could do OFDM. So for example, in the frequency domain, uh, we could divide the frequency into subchannels and we could allocate a certain number of subchannels to user one and a certain number of subchannels to user two. And uh, this is one way, an orthogonal way. So this would be OFDM if this is the frequency. Uh, and this is one way to get two signals to a receiver where we make them orthogonal. Another way would uh, another orthogonal way would be in time with uh, TDMA. Okay, so these are two um, very familiar ways for dividing up time, and then you repeat. This is user one's time, user two's time, and then you go back to user one, and so on. Okay, so these are both orthogonal ways of dividing up the resources. Okay, now what do we know about these resources from a capacity point of view? Well, here are the equations for the capacity uh, if you are able, uh, in well, they, for each of the users. And the first one says if you were giving the full resource and to user one, so if user two was not transmitting with any power at all, then the rate of user one could be up to this value here. And this value is given by Shannon's capacity. And for more information on this, check out the capacity link, the, the video on capacity on the channel. Uh, so we know that up to this rate, it's possible to completely transmit with zero errors. That's what the capacity says. And that's gonna be an important thing for the successive interference cancellation. The idea of complete, correct, zero error transmission up to this rate. And so it uh, depends on power one and the noise. And in this system, the noise is the same for both of the signals that are being sent because they're being received at the same receiver. Uh, the same equation then holds for receiver uh, for user two. The rate that is achievable depends on the power for user two. And then there's a third constraint, which is the sum rate constraint. And it follows because user one and user two, we assume they're sending independent signals, uh, because they're independent, uh, then it also holds that the sum of their rates is the same, uh, using the same formula as if you had a single transmitter with the combined power. Uh, and that's a result because they're IID signals. And because for achieving these rates, it comes with a Gaussian distribution. Uh, and that's part of the capacity result. Okay, so what do these, how do we interpret these and, and how do we understand then, how does it lead us to thinking about successive interference cancellation? Well, here's our rate region uh, uh, axis. So this is what the rate is you're gonna get on for user one and the rate for user two, and they have these upper bounds. So for example, if user two does not transmit with any power at all, then you would be able to receive uh, this R1 value over here. So the maximum value of this, uh, you would be receiving R1 max. That's this value here when this is a quality. Uh, the same thing we can see up here is if uh, user one was not transmitting with anything, then you would get this R2 max. You could uh, transmit, the capacity tells us you could transmit up to that rate. Uh, 
Now let's think about these orthogonal ones just for a moment. Uh, where do they sit on this capacity region? Well, what you could do, let's say for example in TDMA, if you've divided the time up, let's say in half equally between the two users, then you're going to turn on user 1 with power 1 uh, for half the time, and then you'll turn on user 2 with power 2 for half the time. And if we keep those powers, if those powers are fixed and we're not able to increase the power, we just fix with those powers, then over the time slot that we look at, over the whole time slot, then of course we're going to be sending less energy. Because if we have a fixed power we will, and we're only using it for half the time, then the energy will be half. Okay, so and that leads us to a point uh, here where we can achieve two at the same, like if we, if we are now going to be allocating some power to user one and some power to user two in this orthogonal way, then we can achieve a point on this rate curve uh, where we have uh, um, half the rate of user one and half the rate of user two. And I think you can see that if we change this fraction from a half to any other value, then we will get a result somewhere on this straight line. So this is the orthogonal uh, line, TDMA, under the assumption that you have a fixed power and you can't increase that power uh, when you've got, uh, when you're the only one transmitting. Okay, so what it means is the energy is therefore over a fixed time period, the energy will be lower. Okay, under that assumption, uh, this is the line that you can do and you can achieve that by just simply changing that fraction. Exactly the same thing holds with OFDM, uh, where you can change the fraction, the number of subchannels that you're allocating. And again, under the assumption that the power per subchannel is fixed, then this is also going to be the FDMA curve. Okay, now uh, what, how do we get, what's this successive interference cancellation? Can we get a bigger combined rate. So the combined rate is the summation of this rate plus this rate. Okay, so out here it's only R1, uh, here it's R1 plus R2, uh, and here it's R2. Can we get a rate pair that's out in this right-hand region? And it turns out we can. So how do we think about that? Well, let's think if we are putting the power into both users at the same time, let's just think that we're just going to do it without, uh, just for the moment, we're not going to be trying to do it in any particular way, any particular clever way. We're just going to be transmitting at the same time. So these will definitely interfere with each other. But what we know from our capacity formula is that we could get a rate for user two, I mean, what are we going to get? It's not, it's not that we can't get anything through. It's not that they're going to interfere with each other totally in a disruptive way. So we still are able to get a signal through to, uh, to the receiver from each of these. And how does that come about? Well, let's look at the rate for user two in this case. So the rate for user two in this case will be log to the base two, and that's because we're counting it in bits. That's why it's to the base two of one plus the power that we've got for user two divided by, now the, the it's going to be composed of the noise that was there uh, before and is still there, plus the power from user one. Okay, so this number here is now the capacity that we can achieve or the rate that we can achieve when both users are transmitting with those powers. And this is the rate that we can achieve for user two because user one, as we have from the capacity result, user one will be, to achieve its capacity, it will be transmitting with a Gaussian code book, uh, and therefore the signal will look like noise. And so it will be, and because it's independent of the noise, it appears as just an increase in noise as far as the signal from user two is concerned. So this value here, hopefully you can see that now, it's still the power from user two, but now the noise has increased by an amount P1. And that value is going to be lower than R2 max. Uh, and that's, uh, let's say that, num that value is here. Okay, and then the same thing holds on the other axis over here. Uh, so um, there's another rate here for user one, which if user two is transmitting, we can get through log to the base two, one plus power for one divided by power for two plus N naught. So this is the rate that you could get through the channel if they were both transmitting at the same time, and this is the rate for user one. And so one, what this, uh, an interesting result here is, is that, and this is where exactly where the successive interference cancellation comes about, is 
let's think of this one for a minute. If you can receive information or data from user two at this rate, then because this is the capacity result, what it tells you is, uh, as I said before, it means that you are getting that data with zero errors. That's what the capacity formula says. It's possible to send at this rate and get zero errors. So let's, let's assume that you did that and you had zero errors and so you've completely decoded the signal from X2 perfectly uh, by sending at that rate. Uh, then what, well, why, why couldn't you then just subtract that from the received signal that you originally received and if you've subtracted that, because you know it now perfectly, you've decoded it perfectly, you can now subtract that from the received signal and now you're left with just the signal from user one plus the noise. And therefore you could then decode this. Now this one is, doesn't have user two there anymore. You've exactly canceled it because you were able to decode it at that rate, as long as you sent at that rate, uh, you are, you'll be able to exactly decode it. Then you're just left with the single user AWGN channel and the capacity for that one is given exactly here as this maximum capacity. So this gives us a rate point which is all the way over here. So that's, uh, let's talk that logic through again. If they're both transmitting at the same time, if you were able to, uh, if you were sending for rate uh, for user two, if it was sending at this rate here, then you would be able to exactly extract it from the combined signal, okay? Because it's signal divided by noise, where this is acting as noise. So you would be able to exactly decode that signal if you're transmitting at this lower rate. So it's a lower rate than R2 max, and it's such that you would be able to exactly decode it, which means you could then cancel it exactly from the received signal that you had received, and you've stored it and received it, and then you're left with this uh, equation here uh, where I've covered up the part that's been cancelled out. This is the interference cancellation and you're left with just a one single user AWGN channel and that capacity is this maximum over here because there's no interference. And so what it means is you can send at any rate less than this for user two and still be sending at the maximum rate for user one. And the same holds in the other direction here. So you could instead try to decode a uh, user one first, and if you were sending user one at a lower rate than this value, then you could completely decode it correctly, extract it from here or, or cancel it from here, and then you've got user two able to operate at its full rate. And so any rate that you send at for user one, which is lower than this, you would be able to be sending R2 at its maximum rate and vice versa. And so what happens in between here is that, in fact, if you uh, intuitively think about it, you could now timeshare between sending a lower rate for user one and a lower rate for user two. And if you timeshared any fraction of those two, then you could get any result on this line here. Okay, so this is a really important result. This is the successive interference cancellation. It enables you to get a rate pair which is much more advantageous compared to standard TDMA and FDMA uh, under the power constraint that you, you have these fixed powers. Okay, and so this is important. I think you can see that time sharing. Um, just as we talk, discussed for the time sharing for the TDMA, the orthogonal ones. And just the final thing to say is this is the extreme of the uh, rate pair region. In fact, what it means is you can achieve any pair of rates inside this region here uh, by using uh, the successive cancellation approach. So hopefully this video has given you more insights into successive interference cancellation. It's used in a 5G NOMA uh, mobile communications. Uh, and uh, if it has given you those insights, give the video a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the web link in the comments below where you'll find a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel.